time has come. You must continue your journey without me. What? 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 What are you? What? Sins of a Solar Empire 2 has just released, but should you buy it? That's the question we're going to answer in today's video. I'm going to go through what this game is, what I think isn't so great about it, and finally, try to help you answer that question. Sins of a Solar Empire 2 has a heavy focus on space fleets and space battles, where we're going to fight them ship to ship. As opposed to other real-time strategy science fiction games like Stellaris that focus quite a bit more on the empire management side of things and quite a bit less on the individual ships, their names, powers and abilities. It's been 16 years since the original Sins of a Solar Empire launched, 12 years since the expansion Rebellion came out, and now, finally, we're getting a brand new Sins of a Solar Empire 2. What a time to be alive. Let's dive in and find out which sins we'll be committing as a solar empire. Let's explore the fundamentals of Sins of a Solar Empire 2. In this game, you will be able to play as one of three unique races. Each race is divided into two sub-factions. If you've played Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, you'll probably be very familiar with these six factions. We have the Trader Emergency Coalition, which is basically the normal humans. They are split into the Enclave, which is all about defense. They can build two fortresses in a single system, which is very, very strong defensively. And the Tech Primacy, which are much more about offense. The Primacy have access to the Ragnarov Titan and Novalith Cannon. This cannon can bombard enemy planets from the safety of your own home. The Advent are cybernetically and psychically advanced human beings. Cast out long ago by the Trade Order, their biggest hatred is normie humans. The Advent Reborn and Advent Wrath both focus heavily on manipulating the minds and populations of the other factions. The Vasari are the only truly alien race. 10,000 years ago, they once ruled over a vast empire of thousands of planets and dozens of sapient species. Now they've lost all that and they're on their way to either core strip the local world and continue running in the case of Exodus, or settle down and bring some of the nasty Humies on board in the case of the Vasari Alliance. Sins of a Solar Empire 2 has a wealth of different customized playable maps, or if you're not feeling like that, there's also random generated maps. Starting from two players, and going all the way up to a colossal 10, which by the way, this game can actually handle. The performance issues of previous Sins titles are honestly kind of a thing of the past. The Sins 2 engine can use multiple cores and lots and lots of your RAM, it's got a 64-bit engine, to maximize performance now and going forwards. That means in multiplayer games and in very large maps against many AI, you're not going to get lots of slowdown in the late game when there are a host of ships out there. You'll start this game with a single colonized planet and a couple of shipyards. In the case of the Sari, you actually just get one ship and no planet, but let's not get into that. From these humble beginnings, you'll go out, explore, expand, exploit, and when you finally meet aliens, exterminate the rest of your local cluster. If you've played previous installments of Sins of a Solar Empire, this will all seem very, very familiar. A brand new feature that Sins 2 has that I absolutely love, but you can turn this off if you don't like it, is mobile planets. Clicking this future orbits button, you can see how the various planets around our solar system how the various planets around this stellar system will move as time moves on in the game, opening up new lanes of attack and giving you new tactical decisions to make. You'll be utilizing three basic resources, credits made by people, metal, which can be mined on planets and in space, and crystals. Using those, using those resources and the new exotic resources you can find out there in the galaxy, you'll be constructing fleets of spaceships to go and expand and defend your borders. And this is where I'd like to take a moment and talk about the updated and overhauled graphics in this game. Every individual turret on your spaceships will move and fire independently, tracking other ships, and this is really a visual treat. Missiles will fly, and be intercepted and destroyed by enemy point defense. Shields will render in as those missiles and weapons hit other targets. 
all in all, the visuals are just such a major improvement from previous Sins titles. The ships and this game in general honestly look really, really beautiful now. The graphics are not the only thing that's improved vastly since previous Sins titles. We've now got specialized menus allowing us to, at a glance, manage and improve all of the various planets in our empire and our capital ships and star bases. Planets can now be improved with specialized items that can be researched through the vast and extensive research trees for both military and economic research. And the same is true for improving and specializing our ships, meaning we can make all of our ships and planets pretty unique alongside the special abilities they already have. Speaking of technologies, a great new feature that's been added to this game is the intelligent construction system. No longer you're going to have to dive through the tech tree to figure out which specific technology you need in order to build something. Let's say I want to upgrade the mining of this volcanic world to level three from level two, something I currently can't do because I don't have volcanic development technology. The game will simply work out what I need and if I have the resources, queue it all up for me. This is also true of ships. If we'd like to get some more ships for one of our fleets and we haven't researched the technology for that ship, the game will work it out for us and queue up that technology to be researched. Sins 2 has introduced a new system of minor factions that you can discover out there on the map. This generally also includes the old pirate faction from previous Sins titles, but the minor factions are a little bit unique. Each faction has special abilities that you can build up influence to spend and then use. You can befriend them to turn their power to your side. Diplomacy has also had a few great updates. You can now create time-locked alliances with other factions out there in the galaxy, but be careful because when that time lock runs out, they could declare war on you with their ships deep inside your territory. Each of the three races also has their own unique Power. For example, the Trader Emergency Coalition have trade. This is basically a much better and much less opaque version of the trade system that we had in previous Sins installments. And it can really boost the tech economy. The Vasari have phase resonance, allowing them to customize their global phase mastery effects like bringing in sheep from the black space. And the Advent have unity which can strengthen their own worlds, recall fleets across vast distances in an instant, and also convert entire populations to their side. It can be very, very nasty. Overall, Sins of a Solar Empire 2 is a fast-paced 4X real-time strategy game with a host of great new features and a lot of polish added to some old ones. The developer Ironclad Games and the publisher Stardock have not reinvented the wheel with Sins of a Solar Empire 2. They've just made the wheel much, much better. I've racked up 60 or 70 hours of playtime in the last couple of months, and I can honestly say this is the best Sins of a Solar Empire title that I think we've ever had released. The combat simulation is just so intense. We've got fully simulated missiles that can be blocked by not just ships, but point defense targeting those missiles. The turrets independently move and fire. The shields are animated and it all just looks honestly beautiful. The planetary management has been entirely streamlined. You can do it all from a single page, a single tab now in the game. The tech tree has been vastly improved. It's more polished than ever before, and they have made the choice of which faction you play with each race to be quite important by giving each faction something rather special. The stability and smoothness of this game is something I also want to comment on. It's really smooth. It's silky smooth. Everything just works, and I haven't really found much difference if I'm looking at a system with 10 ships as opposed to a thousand ships. But what about the bad? Well, ironically, I think that the things that make Sins 2 great will be a turnoff for some people. If you're looking for an entirely new game that feels totally different to Sins of a Solar Empire 1 or Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, this is not it. This is not a spiritual successor. This is a real number two. Everything has been polished and improved upon. We still have the same basic races and the same factions as we did with Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion that was released, I believe, over a decade ago. It would be great to get a new alien race or some new factions to play with. Whilst you can't get the new UI, the great new graphics, 
and all of those lovely features I've talked about in Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion, the basic gameplay experience is very much the same. At the moment, however, Sins 2 and Sins Rebellion are pretty much the same price on Steam. So if you're choosing between the two, I definitely pick up Sins 2 over Sins Rebellion. Some other negatives, I think the UI can be a little bit overwhelming to a brand new player. If you've never played Sins before, there's a lot of things going on and a lot of stuff you have to do that probably won't make sense unless you really go through all of the tutorials, which this game does have quite a lot of, by the way, That's, that is actually a plus again, or spend a long time working things out through trial and error. Overall, I think Sins of a Solar Empire 2 has really hit it out of the park. This game is to the Sins franchise everything that I believe Homeworld 3 wasn't to the Homeworld franchise. And currently it's quite reasonably priced at around 40 euros. I assume it's roughly equivalent in American dollars, but I just don't know. We know that Stardock plan to do future development on this game, just like they're doing with Galactic Civilizations 4. There are at least four more DLC coming, one small, one medium, and two expansion sized DLC. Possibly one that will introduce a brand new race and a couple of new factions. If you like the look of Sins of a Solar Empire 2 and you can afford it, I think it's a great addition to your library of games. If you want to pick it up from Steam now, I'll put a link to Steam down in the description below where you can grab it. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me actually playing some Sins of a Solar Empire 2, then click the video on screen now.